Hi, I'm Maura Sullivan, and this is my micro teaching assignment for FSC EDU 1107. My topic is multiple intelligences. So, our agenda for today, if you can read it in the background there, is to be able to describe Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. It is also to be able to list the different topics are the different categories and what the dominant features of each of them are. It is also to talk about different types of instruction or activities that you can do that can reach your students which might have a particular dominant intelligence. It is also to look at the links that are available online to either take the quiz yourself or to get perhaps a paper copy that you can share with your students and have them take it. Um, and also to understand why a variety of instructional strategies and activities should be used in a classroom to reach the greatest volume of students. So today we're going to start with what is multiple intelligences. So it was first identified by Howard, Howard Gardner back in 1991. He was challenging the idea that there was a single intelligence, such as an IQ test, and instead that people had multiple types of strengths and different people had these different strengths. So from one person to the next, one might be dominant in something and another person was dominant in something else. So he identified originally seven of them, later expanded it to nine different uh, categories, and um, listed with them the types of preferences they have and the different ways that they learn in each of these intelligences. So the idea is that every person has each of these intelligences, but one, maybe two, or a small handful are dominant in that person. So how they interact with other people, how they interact with the world, how they learn from the world or absorb information, all of these is dependent on what their dominant intelligences are. Um, so let's try the next slide. Here are our intelligences. We have the visual spatial, the bodily kinesthetic, the musical, interpersonal, intrapersonal, we have the verbal linguistic and the logical mathematical. In addition, we have the naturalist as well as the existentialist. Typically, when you go online to take a test, there are either the original seven or sometimes they'll include the naturalist. Usually, you don't see the existentialist one um, on any of the outputs from any of the sites that you take a test on. Why should we as teachers be aware of what multiple intelligences is and how should we adapt for our classrooms? Again, most people have, well, most people, all people have. Um, a combination of different intelligences and typically one or two are dominant. If we want to be able to reach all of our students and give them the potential for learning then we need to be able to present information in different ways. So it kind of goes along with that differentiated instruction that we want to be able to present something in a manner that would reach those who might be um, dominant in music or dominic, dominant in linguistics and as well as those who are dominant in other areas. Now you're not going to be structuring your lesson so you hit every dominance on every single topic, but if we're aware of which intelligences there are and that we can include various activities, we can make sure that as we go through a unit we're hitting on all the different intelligences so we can reach our students. Now, if you have a student who's particularly struggling, it might be nice to know what is their dominant intelligence? How do they learn best? So maybe we can do some remediation and present something for them that will target their strengths and allow them to show that. Also, we want to make sure that our assessments are allowing our students to produce the best product that they possibly can to show us what they've learned. So again, if you give them some choices, uh, somebody who might be able to create a song, musical person, versus somebody who could do a drawing, more artistic or um, visual person, that if you can give them some choices, you might allow the students to be able to show to the best of their potential what they can do. 
differentiated instruction and multiple intelligences. Again, I think I've talked to this already. Be aware of what intelligences your students have and incorporate it into your lessons. Uh, again, not every single intelligence in every single lesson, but make sure that you have a variety across all. So here are some more specifics on each of the intelligences. So the visual spatial. We have the picture smart folks. So they're very picture aware. They're very um, aware of images, their physical space around themselves. They do process information using pictures or images. So the types of activities that you might want to give them is a chance to draw um, graphics and models, those types of things. Flow charts are really awesome for those types of students. Uh, graphic organizers or Venn diagrams are also great in terms of um, helping them with notes. Color coding is another one. So if you have homeworks in one color, if you've got reviews in a different color, uh, if you have uh, particular questions that you're asking, uh, different levels of Bloom's taxonomy, you might want to code them in different colors because this will help them really target, oh, I need to focus on the blue questions because those are the higher critical thinking skills. Verbal linguistic, they love words. They're word smart. So written form is awesome. They like to persuade and argue, debate things. Um, so if you have a student teacher, or you want a student teacher, not a professional trying to become a teacher, but a peer type of teaching situation, they'd be great at it. Uh, reading word games, making up poetry, crossword puzzles, writing articles, letters, those types of things can always reach these people the best and give them the opportunity to produce an end product to show what they've learned. The logical mathematical number smart. They think abstractly, conceptually. They love mysteries. Um, they like logic games. They look for patterns in whatever they're doing. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about choices for your activities and assessments. The naturalistic, they recognize and categorize objects really well. Classification is a little easier probably for them than other students. Um, they enjoy nature. They want to protect nature. So this is important to them because they enjoy that. That's what they live for. So classification and sorting activities will do really, really well for them. Um, observing their natural surroundings, recycling, any type of uh, community cleanup projects. They have an opportunity to, to include that in your curriculum. That would be awesome. Let's see. Then body, bodily kinesthetic, body smart. They're aware of the world around them through their body. They've got great control over their body. Uh, movement, touching, making things, role playing, creating costumes. In a history class, this might be great. They need to act out something, right? Math class, not so much. What are we going to act out? If you got any good ideas on that, let me know. Uh, Twister, Simon says, hands on manipulatives. There's my math class. So, hands on manipulatives, that would be great for them to have. Musical, music smart. They have a sensitivity to sound and rhythm. Um, if you want to sing something, I won't sing for you now. I do have a song about reducing polynomials, which is awesome. I don't know if my students learn it better because I've been singing it or because my voice is so bad that if I say, hey, what's that song? Do I need to sing it for you? They said, oh, I remember because they don't want me to sing. But Writing songs, hearing songs, learning it through song or poetry or rhythm, those types of things are awesome for them. Giving them an opportunity maybe to record something, that would be great. Interpersonal, so people smart. They learn through their interactions with others. They have great empathy for one another. Uh, group activities are awesome for these students. Projects, interviewing, tutoring, debates, those types of things. Intrapersonal. Self-smart, they're very aware of themselves, how they learn. Um, they aren't so great with other people. They shy away from other people, but they are in tune with their own feelings and they have great self-confidence. Uh, they typically need time alone to process the information. So this is another uh, opportunity to give them reflective essays, those types of things, writing goals, journals, maybe scrapbooks to be a little bit more colorful or uh, Imaginative. So how do you determine what these multiple intelligences are? 
Well, obviously you can observe in your classroom and you can say, okay, that person really likes mysteries. They're probably the mathematical logical. But wouldn't it be so much easier if we could get to know our students at the beginning of the year and kind of have an idea right from the start what they're like? Well, there's an online test which you can ask your students to take. There's also a link I included here to a handout, a printed version. So when you're giving your students that lovely, hey, who are you? What do you like? What do you don't like? What are your extracurricular activities? You can also ask them to fill this in. They might be interested in knowing, and obviously we would be interested in knowing. Help us plan through the year. So a few examples of modifications that I've done to my assignments. I won't go through each of them, but a couple of them are particularly interesting. One of them was a curve sketching and first and second derivatives, and it's kind of combined with my last one, relative and absolute extrema. I'm a math teacher, high school level, so I like coming up with creative projects that kids will enjoy doing. I'm not the artistic person, I'm the math person, right? So I don't particularly like projects which force me to try to be creative. So I like to come up with projects where the kids who are creative can be super creative, the kids who aren't creative can also be very successful at it. So I created a project where on the back of some uh, fax paper, you know, fax paper is just a long scroll, that they have to create a curve. And the curve has to have the different features of key features of graphs. Nice smooth curves, sharp corners or cusps, increasing, decreasing, the bend, concave up and concave down, these types of things. So they also have to create a story along with it. So they have a travel, maybe a hill and a valley, it could be a road, it could be skiing, and they gotta create a story and incorporate the language. So critical points, corners, cusps, increasing, decreasing, concave up, concave down, those types of things, in with the key features on the graph. So somebody comes to a high point and they can talk about being at their local maximum. And they go back downhill and they get to a higher point, maybe this is the absolute maximum. So that was very successful for me because the students who were very creative, very visual, had an opportunity to draw. The students who were very literary had an opportunity to, to create a story. So if you can create assessments that mix the different strengths, the different intelligences, you might get better participation. Hopefully, what is our end result? We want our students to grow and learn and show that they've learned the information. So hopefully they'll rise to their potential in something like that. So if we had started with the KWL of what do you know, what do you not know, what would you like to learn? We've learned so far that multiple intelligences is different for different people uh, or their strengths are different. Um, that we should be differentiating our instruction to meet these different strengths so that our students have the potential to grow to, their, to the most that they possibly can. And we've gained insight, hopefully, to our own strengths and our students' strengths if we administer those lovely either online quiz or paper form. I love this graphic. I'm going to make this graphic and put it on my wall to remind me every day that I need to keep these things in mind as I go forward. I need to make sure that I've reached out and met the needs of all my students. So my challenge to you, take the tests online. See what your multiple intelligences are. Drop me a note if you're looking to complete one of your responses and tell me what your intelligence is and let me know. Was it something you expected or did it come back unexpected? The second challenge I tell you to do is to think of an activity, a lesson that maybe didn't go as well as you had hoped. And think about what changes you could make if you considered the different multiple intelligences. So how could you adjust that to maybe meet the needs of the visual learner? How could you change that activity to meet the needs of the bodily kinesthetic learner? Those types of things. So thank you for watching. This is my second try. The first one, I wasn't visible too much, and you got a lot of wavy on my, on my background here on my smart board. So hopefully this one came out a little bit better and you've enjoyed it. I look forward to your feedback, and it was been fun taking the class with all of you.
my references in case you want it. And this will be posted. The PowerPoint will be posted to the um, to the forum as well as this video. Thanks.